A consummate athlete seeks health, community, and adventure through movement. And here on the podcast, longtime endurance coach and kinesiologist Peter Glassford and author and cycling coach Molly Herford are helping you lead your best active, adventurous life. Every week, we talk with professional athletes, health and fitness experts, and of course, real-life consummate athletes. We're excited to have you along for the ride. It has been cold here. Uh, I'm finally kind of adjusting to winter. I realized it, it takes my body like a month and a half, I think, to like warm up to running in freezing cold. I think there's that response to things like heat shock proteins or something like this. Start having like a shivering effect. Yeah, I don't like it, but I'm, I'm starting to get used to it. I had a fantastic run yesterday where I was going and I didn't really realize how bad the headwind was for the first few miles. And then I flipped it and suddenly I was in a tailwind and it was the most magical experience. So I'm, I'm trying really hard to like find the good in all of my, my runs, even when they're not the most exciting or the most pleasant, to be honest. It's a good thing to do for sure. When you're, when you're running to look for the positives. Do you have an article recently that looks at, at uh, something like this? Well, not quite that, but I was actually pretty psyched on the article I put up last week uh, all about sort of the idea of addition versus subtraction habits. Um, I think when we when we tend to talk about habits or we think about habits, we think about, oh my gosh, this is going to take adding something into the day. It's going to take you know doing more. If you don't have time, that can sound you know just really difficult. Um, so I like the idea of thinking about different habits, you know, whether if you're talking about like eating healthier, you can look at it in terms of addition or subtraction or both. But I think if you're a busy person for whom the idea of like meal prep just sounds absolutely terrible and, you know, just like beyond your control right now, uh, I think, you know, you can start thinking about what you can subtract rather than what you can add. So, you know, that might be subtracting the second glass of wine or the glass of wine. Right. Yeah. It might be something like not going to the LCVO or the the liquor store um, at all. Right. Which might actually save time, which sounds, you know, in some ways like, Oh, that's like a big change if that's like a regular routine, but it would be like less stops. Right. So it's actually is less things, which I think is the, that's the heart of your thing is like not every habit is like 20 minutes of Zen meditation and some sort of like holy bath or something. Yeah, exactly. And then I think once you kind of start that, like once you get the runway going where you are kind of taking out some of uh, some of those when you're subtracting things, I think then it actually becomes easier to add in things. Right. Um, because you, you've made space for it and just kind of gotten, you know, you've seen hopefully some some good things. You know? Well, and some of those subtraction ideas too are sort of this like you know it's maybe easier to not go into the store or not you know in the grocery store you know maybe it's easier to not get the treats versus if you have the treats or something like that or just sometimes some of those things are easier because the actual decision gets made in a, a less i think that sometimes you hear those called like hot and cold moments like it's not such a like like heat of the moment type like will i have the treat <laughs> you know it's dessert time it's yes. more like, you know, or, or like alcohol would be one, right? Like it's easier to make that decision at like 9 a.m. than it is at like 9 p.m. maybe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I'll say, you know, personally in the last couple of months, I've, I've shifted from, you know, kind of automatically having my glass of wine with dinner to automatically not having my glass of wine with dinner and like making a decision later if I'm going to have a glass or not. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually been a really good one for me in terms of subtraction, like taking away that sort of automatic, of course, I'm going to have a glass of wine with my meal. Like now it's not an automatic. Right. Yeah. So anyway, just kind of a new framework for thinking about habits. You can find that over at consummateathlete.com. And that's based around uh, one of the chapters of our book where we're sort of talking about all of the different habits that you you can put in or take, or I guess take out depending on how you're yeah. looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a whole section is just sort of like not so much even like specific habits but like different sort of ways to frame a habit almost right or, or different ways to go about different habits exactly yeah. we didn't want to just like hit you with a book of just like here's all of the habits without any kind of guide guidance for yeah how to make them happen yes yeah, so the framework for it or, or it's almost like meta habits or something right yeah i don't know if it's, it's that's quite what that is but close enough yeah yeah um, okay well what else do we have well, today's guest actually kind of embodies someone I think who would probably need to do more habit subtraction than addition. Uh, so David Swain is the founder of ProKit, um, but he's also 
former tech guy, worked at companies like Instagram. Well, I guess he's still a tech guy, but just now with a, an eye toward athlete social media, which is pretty exciting, honestly. Um, and he's he's kind of a he's a, he is a consummate athlete, cycling, skiing, surfing. He's into gravel. He's into trail running. Sort of pretty all around uh, athlete. Kind of came from more of like an extreme skiing background, and we sort of talk about that and BMX and sort of that more like X gamey type uh, intro to sport. But then got into endurance sport as he got older, and we talk about how it seems like a lot of the high achieving type people out in Silicon Valley doing, you know, the tech thing who are still working, you know, 80 hour weeks, still have like families and kids and everything are also somehow making time to do like ultra running events and Ironmans and all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, I don't the, know if that's a thing about busy people I get stuff gonna done. I was just going to say that. There's also like, I think it's probably a Dan John thing, but it's like this idea that like the harder you like work, you know, the more you have to like rest and play and, you know, this sort of stuff, it's, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a balance there somewhere. Well, I guess if you're, if you're always tipped, if you're tipped really far one way, you have to like have really to play jump harder. on that seesaw yeah. to like get you to, to yeah. balance. Yeah. If you don't work that hard, you don't really need to play that hard or recover that hard to balance. Yeah, I guess at some point there must be like hours in the day issue there, but yeah, I mean, we talk about the definite downsides to that. It's yeah. not like this is all like roses and like a total positive that these guys who are working 80 hour weeks are also trying to do 100 miles sure yeah but, there's maybe like phases you know or, or shifting of different days or something but it's just a really interesting concept i guess and to so hear, what do you think about this pro kit what is what is going on with this i think thing? it's actually super cool so i like this a lot especially for uh, any athlete who you know thinks that they should start a blog or like an athlete website or something, this is actually a really good platform for it because it's it's basically all of the functionalities of like a blogger or a WordPress as far as creating posts. But then it's also got more of like a social media element, kind of a news feed element, like collecting from right. you know all of these different pros and a lot of really big names are on there. Right. Like right. So you of... could generate your own blog or post, mm -hmm. but then also you could read about someone's. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's in the like direction of like a Facebook, Instagram, but then very niched to like endurance sport. Uh, athletes of all types, but I'd say endurance sport is kind of right. the heart of it. Um, I actually have a pretty exciting project coming up with them at some point in the near future, so I won't won't say too much about it now. But I'm pretty okay. excited. Well, about it sounds that. like something like it's free to join. I it's think free to still, join, so yeah. it might be something for people to to keep an eye on uh, as we come into the the new year and stuff. Because yeah. it does seem that like I'm hearing a lot more. Like we've been aware of this for a couple of years, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like it's getting mentioned, and as you say, bigger bigger names. DW is excited apparently. Yeah, very yeah. excited. Maybe we should make DW a profile. I don't know about Hiking that. Hiking would be no. his main sport, I think. He's not into it. He's not into no. it. Okay, fine. All right. Well, <laughs> while I try to convince Peter that DW needs his own profile, enjoy this conversation with David Swain. David Swain, welcome to the Consummate Athlete Podcast. I'm so excited we get to do this. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, I mean, before we get into exactly what pro kit is um i kind of wanted to get your athletic background because it's it's a little mixed bag as i was looking through your own profile it is it is um i mean i grew up doing all the i mean i was a soccer player from the time i can first remember and um but always had a sweet spot in my heart and like for bmx biking surfing even though i grew up across lake ontario from where you are now where you i was not surfing but like that kind of counterculture um vibe like we were very into bmx and skateboarding and then i got into go-kart racing for 10 years and mogul like freestyle the, i was basically doing like the equivalent of big air skiing when you had to build the jumps yourself <laughs> um and and then just, you know, I always everything like outdoors, like cliff jumping, like anything that was fun and outside and had some adrenaline in it. I was not into endurance as a kid. Like, you know, I was into into being strong for my sports, but not into like going out on like a long run or bike ride was not, you know, I entered a mountain bike race and what was it? 1994. And, uh, and I had just ridden 
single track, like in the parks near my house and the mountain bike race required us to go uphill before you could come back downhill. And that was really not my, uh, cup of tea until my ski injuries and everything hurt my knees. And they were like, you should start riding a bike for real. And that kind of opened up the endurance world in my early twenties and totally fell in love with it. So, but yeah, I do at surfing, biking, skiing, a little bit of all of it. Um, I've done some triathlons. I got in the cycle cross in 2013. So, um, which I absolutely loved, like totally was amazing to, yeah. <laughs> I feel like cyclocross is where the kids who were into a lot of those adrenaline things, but then had to get into endurance stuff for whatever reason. Yes. That's where they end up gravitating towards. It, it, so good. I mean, it was perfect because I didn't have enough time to train, but I knew like from skiing and gr growing up racing cars, I knew like lines and how to flow. And I grew up riding ramps on bikes. So cyclocross, even though I didn't have the endurance, the, the sport made so much sense to me um, and kind of combined all the stuff I had done. Um, and yeah, I loved it. And then the cyclocross scene out here in the Bay Area kind of imploded. It's, and I don't know where yeah. it went, but it was really fun. And then all of a sudden it just disappeared. So that's um, so interesting you say that. So I was the editor at Cyclocross Magazine for a few years. And I remember when it was like kind of in its like heyday. Yeah. And I think it was like the last year I was at Cyclocross Magazine. It definitely did just kind of like fall off the radar. Like we weren't getting press releases about races anymore. Oh, I still don't know. I know a couple of the organizers folded or merged, but it just from from between two. I think around 2015, it just kind of, which was right when I was getting into it. Um, <laughs> you know, so like, it was a bummer. The but then, luckily, gravel biking kind of took its, you know, took took some of the place, and and you know, so I've I've fallen in love with that now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and. I mean, if you played soccer, you did kind of all of these like BMX -y type things. So, and then endurance sports tend to be this very solo endeavor. So, is that part of the impetus for starting the the pro kit concept, or where did that enter the, the picture? I've always been into. I mean, if you look at like any sport I played, including like car racing, which is not an endurance sport, but it's like the mental focus that goes into it is unlike anything I've ever done. Um, and the gear and the planning, and you always want to know in every sport I've done, you want to know what the pros know. Mm -hmm. You want to know what the experts know. Like you're like, what insights are they giving? It's funny because in cars, it was the same thing. Like what tire pressure do you run? What gearing do you you know, the the lit, the smallest detail like literally the smallest detail determined whether you were on the pole position or you were starting in sixth place oh my god um, you were meant for cyclocross <laughs> just like the what tires what tire pressure oh yeah you're perfect but for I've it always, i've always been really into um into kind of the entire person health so like not just the physical side but mental so i was a psychology major um like and in my career, the same thing, like the, the trying to combine the pieces like physically, mentally, emotionally to perform at your best, whatever that means to you. Um, and I've just found it way too hard to get to good, trusted information from experts I can trust. And um, it's out there. And it just takes too long when you're entering a new sport or you're deciding to pick up something like meditation to figure out how to do it, where to go. So the idea with ProKid is like, let's give those experts and pros uh, a platform to share what they know. And then the audience is, is people like me who are passionate about the outdoors or about their health or about turning a corner in their life. Um, and so, yeah, on, on one side, you've got the experts and the pros. And on the other side, Pro Kid is just a platform for you to come get inspired, see what races your friends are doing, um, have a profile to blog about things that are important to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually really liked the idea of like having 
so Peter and I were both talking, we remember back when, you know, we both first started getting into sport, you know, we both had very bad blog spots where we had our race reports and our training and stuff. And people don't do that as much anymore. But I remember having, you know, 40 tabs open. This is like 15 years ago, 40 tabs of like other triathletes blogs and like refreshing them every day to see how they were training. So I actually I was so excited about the idea of like people putting their like training and racing reports and stuff. Um, and even from like a, you know, okay, if I'm doing say Leadville next year, if I can go look at like 40 race reports from Leadville from like last year and yeah. see, you know, what mistakes other people made and like what other people you want just, you to know about it. You just nailed it. I mean, that's, it's funny when I started getting into the cycle cross, I had all these bookmarks saved. It was like early web days, except this wasn't even early web. It was like 2013. And and that was the impetus for us to launch this collections product. Because I was like, there's all these people who really know their sport or who are doing a ton of research because they're starting it. They're all saving this content. And wouldn't it be cool if you, if you created this Get Started the Cycle Cross guide from all the research you did and that was public and other other people could follow it and you kind of did the research for them and were able to like give back like that was the um but the race reports too so the same thing for me like the first template we launched with like if in our post like if you're going to write a blog post there's like the basic empty template and then there's a race report template and because the same thing like um instagram where i worked the you know before starting pro i was gonna um, i was gonna get back well, to that yeah you it's you funny because we, <laughs> we replaced i think a lot of that went away because of because of social media and that to me is is terrible like we lost this depth um and there's all there's amazing parts of it the storytelling the visual parts are so great but the we lost all of this depth and insights and knowledge through um and so that, which wasn't intentional, like we weren't trying to replace it, yeah. but that just happened. <laughs> I mean, heck, even remember like online forums, the ones that were like super text-based, I remember being in, you know, like a vegan fitness forum when I first got into sport. And that was this huge part of like what I was as an athlete. Like I owe that so much and I don't feel like people do that anymore. Yeah, I know. And that's a big open, I mean, for us, like our bet, our hypothesis is that people still want depth and high quality information and insights. Mm -hmm. um, and time will tell like if we have the attention span for it or not. It's still like a little bit TBD. I mean, podcasts are a good, podcasts have depth. So in some ways it got replaced by audio, um, mm -hmm. which is, is also interesting. Yeah, for sure. As we as we talk on a podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and I, I feel like as an endurance athlete in particular, I appreciate podcasts deeply because I can listen to them on my runs and like while I'm on the trainer and all that kind of stuff. So for me, that's been probably like why I got into podcasts. Otherwise, I'd, same. Yeah. Like I don't. Li I'll shouldn't even say it on a podcast, but like I don't listen to it around the house. Like I listen to it if I'm driving or if I'm working out. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's back, like back up from Instagram. Yep. Um, you know, you have the, like Instagram is Instagram. Like this is a very like safe bet. Um, and then you're going to start the, the pro kit for athletes. Uh, how, how did you, how did that work? <laughs> I, I just, I had to do it. <laughs> I mean, leaving Instagram was the hardest thing I've done in my career. Like there's been big bets that I've made. Um, but that leaving was was really hard, um, and I just I this is you know the the health outdoors wellness side of life is the area that I've been the most interested in, passionate about since I can remember, and I've I learned all of these things through my career about how to bring people together create an ecosystem that can like do something big. And I've wanted to apply it to, you know, this, this area, you know, forever. And so, um, it was kind of like a now or nothing. I have to give it a shot. I have to go for it. Um, mm -hmm. and, 
and so here we are. <laughs> yeah. So how long has it been since you started? I I remember getting an email from you like way way. I back. reached out to you right at the yeah at the very the very beginning. Um, we turned the site on about this time last year, and we were kind of like reaching out to like a. 50 people, um, probably in the months leading up to that, which is probably when I reached out. Um, and we started, you know, working on it probably about a year before that. So to get the design and the brand, like the name and all of the pieces, the company formation part, which I had watched happen from other companies, but I had definitely never done myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so that, yeah, you know, that part took about a year to like hire our designer who built, you know, who kind of created, helped us create the brand. And, and then, um, my co-founder and I came together. So she's an ultra runner who worked, um, worked with me at Facebook in the early days. Um, and so then, yeah, that relationship and all of those, those pieces kind of come together. And then we got the initial version up. Okay. What's up with these like high performing endurance athletes in like these really hectic tech jobs? How is that a thing? Yeah, I, it's so funny when I before ProKit, I pitched a art. I was like, I need to write. I enjoyed writing. And that was a topic I pitched to Runner's World and we were going to do it. And then I just didn't follow up. Um, but because, <laughs> because so you were busy training and did not high power. But nowhere job. near what some of the people here are doing. I mean, I was like, you know, doing cycle cross, having fun, but I, I, I was training six hours a week. It was not like I was fitting in. Um, but so on the Instagram leadership team, there's I'd be just looking across the, our eight person team. Um, so there, Kevin Wheel, who um, was on the leadership team with me, um, is an ultra runner who I think he runs. A, I, the last I I think he runs three thousand miles a year while having three kids and being on the leadership team of Instagram. Now he's a, a different company, but um, and on the boards of Strava and every like and I yeah I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'm just be exactly like under my sure. desk, like shaking. Yeah. I was an underachiever compared to that for sure. Um, so what what is it about that? Like what what made what do you think drives that? As you were thinking about this article, I think I mean it is those jobs. Like my nine years that I spent, like in that world, um, it's so intense and so overwhelming and if you don't have a hobby and a passion outside of it that gives your brain some time off even if it's time off like crushing yourself on the trail as some of these people are doing and as I did in cycle like I used any spare moments I had which was six hours to you know have fun and train hard so um I, I think you need that you need some type of outlet um, mm -hmm. and especially as kids come into the equation, you see that even turn up more because then you've got that in your kids and both are awesome, both overwhelming, and you have to have some type of, some type of outlet. And for many of these people, it becomes, um, endurance sports and we live in a great place in Silicon Valley and around San Francisco for that. So I think it lends itself well of like, if you can wake up at six and get out for an hour and, yeah. and then the weekend warrior craze, like it is a complete madhouse of weekend warriors, which um, it is fun to see on the roads and the trails. Yeah, yeah. So did you ever, did you ever hit a moment of like approaching anything you could consider like burnout as you've been doing all of these things? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that was part of why. Um, I mean, I got into meditation and cyclocross at my burnout moment. Which are uh, two hilariously different things, oh, yeah. by the way. Well, I, actually, meditation came a year after. Um, but I was in, I would say I was from 2000, I don't, re I don't, 2013 to 14, like a two year period, I was in like full burnout mode. 
um, two young kids, like a growing and big team and a lot of amazing things, but just chaos and intense responsibility at Instagram. And, um, yeah, it was in full, I was loving it, but in full burnout mode, um, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you added cyclocross to like burn off some of the steam and then you added it, meditation it to like. Cyclocross sort of worked. Meditation actually did work. Um, <laughs> So cyclocross gave me something to think about. So I didn't feel like I was 100% only um, kids and work. Right. Um, and and then meditation actually grounded me for the first time. and Gave you a chance to think about nothing for back. a minute. <laughs> instead of. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I need to get back to it, though. <laughs> I know. Actually, it's funny. I had kind of gotten away from it for like, eight months here or so. Uh, just like when we started doing a training camp back in February, I just, I know when you don't have time, you're supposed to make more time, but like easier yeah. said than done. Let's, let's be real here. Uh, and I just dropped it. And then I just got back to it like two weeks ago and I'm like, Oh yeah, I do feel better. Huh? <laughs> Gotta remember it this. Works. It's such a bummer that like it, ta it, it takes, yeah, it usually takes going down into a place where you really need it again to motivate you to go, yeah. Which I think with with COVID, I'm assuming most of us are in some form of that place right now. Yeah, seriously. I almost need to like record a video of myself just being like, future self who stopped meditating. Like, watch this. You're going to feel better if you do it. So please do it. <laughs> just like, every, I mean, I, that was my biggest. And I, I really, the last couple of years have been bad. Um, but my biggest takeaway when I was in it was how much it actually felt like exercise like and you're training your brain instead mm -hmm. of your body and the consistency like i mean it is that consistent thing you commit to it for three months and even though you don't you know you don't notice all the changes immediately like at the end of those three months you've like you're in like peak fitness yeah. <laughs> of your brain right and it like is a, it's just incredible to, to feel the transformation over time so yeah, motivation absolutely. to get back to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, I mean, kind of on that note, you've had a lot of really cool people doing really cool stuff on, actually, I'm going to back up for two seconds. Yep. Uh, the Pro Kit, where did the name come from, as you were mentioning, like the year it took to get it going? So um, we were playing with a lot of different names, and I kept talking about just this idea that I want to know what's in the kit, the mental, physical, emotional kit, not just the kit of what they're wearing, but what is in the kit of the expert. Um, and, and deliberately not, like this is where the, the name is meant, pro is meant to embody people who have expertise, what's in their kit. Mm -hmm. You can be a writer, podcaster, an academic, a pro athlete, and, um, and I just liked the ring of pro kit is one word and um and yeah i i would say i was worried at the beginning time will tell like i didn't want it to imply you have to be a pro to be on the site because it's the opposite it's like the pros have a platform to share what they know and you have a platform to share what you know and you could become a pro mm -hmm. um and yeah so that's that's the inspiration for it and then the the branding on it has, I don't know if you, what you, it's, it was to me a throwback to 1980s BMX, the colors and big bolt. That's what I, you know, that was what was in my head and our designer turned it into, you know, he took what was in my head and made it real. So it's so funny you say that because when I was doing the, um, sort of idea for, uh, the shred girl series that I write for the first book, I had to kind of send the, uh, illustrator for the cover. So I'm like, ideas on like a you know mood board kind of situation right so if i shared it with you it's all just like i think the cover of rad is on it like it's yeah. all 90s bmx like just stuff like that because i loved that so i know i've got this right behind me people can't <laughs> see but i've got this haro designs book from the 80s and else i i was took a whole bunch of pictures from that to send to uh they had just such good bold colors and 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, very, uh, very uh, different from what's sort of like trending now with very minimal, like black and white, which I admit is where, like, that's what I yeah. love. But yeah. there is something just awesome about that bold 90s, like glaring yeah. colors. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so now back to what I was going to ask is, you know, you have all these like really good articles and prose and stuff on there. So uh, is there anything exciting that you've learned recently? Any like tips you've gotten or anything like that? It's interesting that. um, So my I have a podcast called The Common Threads and one the idea with that was to understand what what are the, like the, what are the common threads between people who have reached some type of success in their career or sport? How did they do it? What are the habits, routines? Are there common threads between the people or not? And, um, the more articles we have on pro kit and the more pros and experts I've talked to, um, the, I wouldn't say it's like one deliberate thing as much as like these common threads of um consistency like these bully like this putting one foot in front of the other like everybody has their own you pretty unique story but they all um they found ways to commit to something consistently and with awareness of kind of my body and mind and um and you know they like I'm constantly reminded by that. So we do this. We're start. Like we're we're trying to do too many things at once. But we have this a, a new series called Pro Kit Ten, where we the idea for that is like, what are the common threads from these people on training or nutrition or mindset? Um, you know, I I do notice how many of these people, especially the people who have been in their sport for like decades, like the people who reach the absolute top, um, sleep comes up all the time, right? Like Mm -hmm. the no shortcuts comes up all the time. I'm always looking for shortcuts, but you know, that's like, you know, and there are some shortcuts, but the the reality is like they commit, they're consistent and they, they love the process. So all of those things, I just am always reminded by them with every, everyone I talk to. Yeah. And it's so funny because I think that's, so we have our new book coming out next month, Becoming a Consummate Athlete. And that's one of like, that's a huge part of what our book says. And that's, you know, from hundreds of amateur clients that Peter's worked with over the years and from hundreds of pros that I've interviewed over the years. Right. It was the same when I wrote Fuel Your Ride a few years ago, I interviewed like 10 different cyclists. And even though one was a vegan and one was like more on like the paleo and one was like on an antihistamine diet. If you actually wrote down what they ate and like kind of where their, like their tendons for nutritional, like well being outside of just like, I'm a vegan or like I don't eat dark chocolate. It was so funny how similar they all were. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I completely agree. Like at the, especially at the high end, like it, they have more in common than, than they do apart for right. sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. And so any, any super exciting pieces that are up right now that you would kind of call, call attention to that you've been like, just so stoked got, got written? Well, we just, um, this one, I mean, this one's very simple, but we're doing a series called the pros kit, which I've been excited about since before we even launched. Like, okay. I'm yeah. going to stop and just say, this is like my favorite thing in the universe because I, I I have been, I could show you if I pulled open my file drawer, I have stuff from when I was eight years old that I ripped out of magazines that was like, what's in their bag kind of things from like Women's Day and Family Circle and like L Girl and all of these old magazines. And I've been doing that for years and I have tried to pitch this to so many different endurance sport magazines, like the what's in the bag thing and no one ever goes for it. So very excited right now. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that was like part of the impetus for starting the pro kit and like I try to get into that in my podcast but they're really long and the interviews are really long and and so the whole time I've been like we need to just I want the like exactly what's in their kit what are they reading watching listening to how much do they sleep what are they doing for their mind what are their training tips what's in their what's their favorite gear like they're a cyclist like 
what tires do you love? Yeah, like it, How much what air exactly? Do you want? Yeah, like, just give me the like. It, but and we've we only we've only done we we've got a couple coming. Um, we launched we did the first one um, this week, and and it's it's um, it's it's awesome. And um, I already like we interviewed a pro tri- triathlete, um, and she shares her favorite newsletters and podcasts, which I'm like really into. I'm like, Oh, she, she, you know, there was one in there I hadn't heard of. And that's like exactly the type of insight I want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And, um, we're, we're, we'd started a series like letter to my younger self from some of the, the top pros of like lessons they would share or, and we're hoping that can become an also an important place for people to discuss like bigger topics in the industry mm-hmm. um, around gender diversity or bigger areas that need to be addressed too. So, um, you know, I, those are exciting, but I, I don't know. I get my problem is I get too excited about all of them. So um, it's a good problem and- to have. That's a really good problem to have. Um, all right, before I before I wrap this up, how are you doing all of this? Because that's a ton of content, and like that's all like on the front end. That's not even talking about like the back end of keeping this whole thing going. Yeah, well, you. I mean, you guys. You guys do. You have your you know, your your whole package, right? Like it's it's doable. Um, right now, it's it's a tiny. I mean, it's it's a tiny tiny team, <laughs> um, and working our tails off and um i mean the 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 vision for pro kid is not that we're producing content at all it's that we give people a platform in the industry um to share content whether it's just because you enjoy writing and you have race reports and tips to share or because you're a nutritionist or psychologist or author or podcaster or coach or doctor and by building your brand on ProKit in a community of athletes, you can offer services and build your business. Like, I mean, that gig economy, like everyone's doing a hundred things. And like, we hope that, and that's another problem for me is like, it's impossible to know at least getting started. Now it's, it's still hard, but how do you hire a coach? Like, how do you find a sports nutritionist? Like what even is a sports psychologist? Should you be work like, or whatever, like all of those things, um, we hope, you know, in some ways we've used the analogy of like LinkedIn for athletes and experts, like, because if ProKit does work to the vision, you would be able to show up a year from now and, and be able to find and hire those people, those experts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even know where I just, what your question was or where I <laughs> on that. But, <laughs> That that was an excellent answer to whatever I had asked. Um, I think I mean I think you answered it. It's just like you're you're doing a lot of things right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you can tell. Um, I don't know. We're, I mean, we're we're working hard. Um, that's the and trying to stay focused. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Where can people go to to get on board with this and check it out? So theprokit.com is the website and it's just like any some people like you have to log in it's a we've done that deliberately and it's to really maintain the integrity and positivity of the community we don't just want it completely open your content as a creator is open so you can write and share and everyone can see it but to get into the platform um to be part of like the network you just log in and um on social we're either pro kit or the pro kit if pro kit wasn't available (laughs) (laughs) and we have a Strava club, um, called the pro kit community where people can also, um, join the party and people can send me feedback directly at Swain S W A I N at the pro kit.com. So we're always looking for feedback, product tips, ideas, contributors, engineers, designers, (laughs) anyone can help us build this. 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, it's been really cool to see how it's grown in the past year. And yeah, like I said, it's it's one of those things where I've been kind of keeping an eye on it. And then all of a sudden, it just seemed like it, there was this like slow trickle where like more and more people who I knew were like suddenly mentioning it and stuff. So it's clearly, clearly going. Well, thanks for being right... part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully we, we add some value. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for tuning into the Consummate Athlete Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes, please do us a huge favor. Leave us a rating or review wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us bring on, you know, great new guests. And yeah, we'd also love to hear from you. You can find us on the interwebs um, at consummateathlete.com, at consummateathlete on Instagram. Uh, and I am at Molly J. Herford on Instagram and Twitter. And Peter is at Peter Glassford. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Hey fans and loyal listeners of the Wide Angle Podium. It's Rob Kelly, the host of No Training Wheels. Please join me and the rest of the Criterium Nation as we explore the best that domestic road racing has to offer. In each episode, we meet and hear from the racers, teams, promoters, and people that make the American road scene exciting and engaging and go beyond the results to talk about the how and why of racing that fascinates us all. So subscribe to No Training Wheels anywhere you get your podcasts. For a full archive of episodes, please visit our website, No Training Wheels Pod, or follow us on Twitter at NTWheelsPod, or on Instagram at No Training Wheels Pod.